Right, so this is what the system looks like with the lid off. It's based on three 12 volt solenoid valves, one high pressure switch, and the controlling circuitry is based around an Arduino Nano, four MOSFETs, and that's it literally. Uh, the LCD here is a 20 by 4 standard LCD with an I2C board soldered on the back that's connected to the to the PCB there. Now how it works, if I turn it on the back, we've got the first valve here it basically controls whether the RO machine is is currently flushing or not. So essentially where you get your standard RO machine uh, with the ball valve to turn the flushing on or off, this literally replaces a ball valve. So the piping comes in here and exits here where the, the, the ball valve is on the on the RO machine and this solenoid valve here will control whether the flushing uh, is happening or not. Now the the good output from your membrane basically enters the system here this should be connected to waste and this is your good, good output. So this is essentially the the overall output from this RO system. Now what happens is after flushing, we need to divert. Well, after flushing, the TDS levels in RO water after the membrane are usually quite high. It could be as high as over 100 TDS and if that is sent directly to the DI stage then you're wasting your DI resin so what the system does is after flushing is complete uh, the membrane output that enters here is diverted away to the waste for a certain amount of time, I've set it currently to 90 seconds and following that stage then the uh, the membrane output is then diverted away to the DI stage or w however you collect your, your RO membrane usually which for most uh, aquarium reef purposes it usually does go to a DI membrane a DI stage sorry so when the membrane output enters the system here it goes to a T uh, one part of the T goes around to this a solenoid valve which controls whether the output from the T basically is sent to waste. If it's on then the output from the membrane is going to waste. If it's off then it won't go to waste. Uh, in the same way output from this part of the T goes to this solenoid valve which controls whether the output goes under there and comes out as good output essentially. Now this high pressure switch which is on the good output line functions as a on off switch so the output here after the switch is meant to go to your your ultimate output for the RO system which usually is a DI stage which goes to a, a top-up container, auto top-up container uh, or goes to a, um, a a barrel or container, well, however you store your, your RO water or use your RO water, the output from your RO system goes out from here. So if you have an auto shut off switch for example at the end of this line then when that's off 
the high the, the, the pressure becomes high here. If you have a ball valve, for example, on the end of this line also, then when that's switched off as well, the pressure here will also be high. So when, when there's a high pressure, when when this line is restricted, when your system is turned off, then the pressure here will be high. And this high pressure switch basically sends that as a signal to the system, so the system knows that the uh, that it, it that it is turned off or that it should be turned off. If this signal, if if the pressure here drops, this signal goes low, and the system knows that it should resume production. If there's been quite some time since the last production, then it will kick in with a flash, a full flash, which is five minutes, followed by a divert for 90 seconds, and then it would turn on and run as long as necessary, which is the best practice, as far as I know, with regards to flushing your membrane. If the, I think I programmed it for a minute or five minutes, something like that. If, if the RO system was turned off within the last minute or five minutes, if it was turned off recently basically, then it won't do a full five minute flush, it would do a quick flush, which I think is 60 seconds, and then divert away for a while and then go back to normal operation. Um, right, so that explains the piping. These solenoids consume around 200 milliamp so they, they they won't get too hot but they do get hot they will get warm uh, the MOSFETs also although they are these ones are logic level MOSFETs and run pretty cool uh, especially for the, the the little consumption from the relays um, so they shouldn't really need cooling but since it is a, a closed space I've opted to put a small fan to provide some cooling. This I got a bit happy, I think, when I was drilling the holes here. I drilled the sixth hole for no known reason, but it now serves as a exhaust for the hot air. At that corner, at the bottom, there's a five mil hole. And that serves as an emergency drain in case there's a leak or, of some sort. Hopefully avoiding the circuit inside. Ideally this should be perhaps housed in two separate units, one for the electronics, one for the plumbing. But I can't be bothered at the moment, that might happen in the future. Now to explain how the circuit works. Let's try and get a good look here. Wait. As best I can anyway. Right, we've got an Arduino Nano in the middle. Four MOSFETs here. Now, each of these three MOSFETs controls one of the relays. And the fourth MOSFET at the top controls the fan. They switch the relays and the fan. I've put a protection resistor on the gate of each MOSFET just to provide uh, some protection to the Arduino pins in case for some reason they malfunction and pull too much current from the Arduino which shouldn't ever happen but just in case um, yep so these MOSFETs basically switch the 12 volt line which is the side and we've got the 4 pin header I2C header basically that goes to the screen. We've got the 12 volt input with a TVS diode there to pro provide some protection to the overall circuit from the relay switching, from the fans, from anything else that might happen. Um, and these are the inputs from the switches from the high pressure switch and from the front now basically this DC jack here goes to a uh, goes to a, a switch a float switch 
Oh, what's that? What that's meant to achieve is uh, if if this system is connected to a sump, for example, with a uh, with an with a top-up reservoir, an RO uh, top-up reservoir for the for, for an auto top-up system, for example, then as the switch drops, the RO system will kick in. Flash for five minutes, divert for a minute and a half, and then start its production. Probably after only a few seconds, a minute at most, the viral production, the top up reservoir switch would then rise and turn off this system because the RO reservoir will be full again. Now, when that drops again, the system would kick back into, ac into action, flash again for five minutes and if that if that cycle keeps repeating quite frequently you're ending up wasting quite a lot of water you're saving your DI resin but you're wasting a lot of water in the process um, so what I've put here is a DC jack that basically goes like I said to a switch uh, a flow switch and that flow switch should be positioned at the bottom of your RO top-up reservoir now when this high pressure switch detects a loss of pressure at your RO top up reservoir for example then it won't automatically start it will wait for a signal from the float switch which as it should be positioned at the bottom of your reservoir it will mean that your reservoir is empty only then will the system kick in and start RO production again. So essentially what would happen is you've got when your RO reservoir level drops this system would then kick in but wait for it to empty. When it empties it will then kick in, start production and fill up your reservoir again. When your reservoir fills up the high pressure will switch this high pressure switch and turn the whole thing off again. Now if you don't have this plugged into a top-up reservoir, as I don't currently, I just fill a few containers here and there as I need them, then I can turn this functionality off. If this switch is on, then it will wait for the signal from the DC jack here. If it's off, then it won't. This switch just uh, short circuits uh, the DC jack. And that's it. Uh, I should say, I have no idea how much this costs. Well, I have a rough idea. <laughs> uh, if you want to know, then PM me, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll let you know where I got the bits from and and so forth. This this what this high pressure switch I ordered from China last year, I think, in anticipation for this project. These solenoids I ordered from the States recently, from eBay. They set me back, I think, around £10 each in the end. Um, yeah, so you can calculate from there. I mean, the, the, the main expense is the, uh, the solenoid valves, three of them. The switch is not too expensive, I think it's a few pounds. The Arduino Nano is about a fiver. Uh, the screen I think is about six pounds, eight pounds, something like that. Most of the bits for the circuit I had, uh, I I already had here. I bought this nice paddle switch because it looked really cool and it's really high quality. Uh, these, uh, these I don't know what you'd call them. These kind of panel mount. Uh, connectors for quarter inch RO pipe I sourced from Osmotics. They were quite quite pricey, as most Osmotic Osmotics uh, products are, um, but they are high quality, as most Osmotics products are. I got all these T's and basically all the all, all my RO stuff I, I get from Osmotics, apart from the switches. 
as I just said I must mention also that there's a fuse somewhere in here as well there's a 3 amp fuse there just in case something weird happens um, and I think that's it any questions uh, let me know in a thread and if you want to build something like this then I'll be more than happy to help thank you for watching